Needless to say, I won't be watching the Winter Olympics in China, where it's winter every day for the human spirit, not just in those isolation hotels. I'm not sure I can handle 14 more days. Even from the moral comfort of a couch, Xi Jinping's internal repression, absorption of Hong Kong, and anti-democratic compact with Russia's Vladimir Putin, struck, by the way, on the eve of the opening ceremonies, makes the Beijing Olympics a bit too redolent of the Munich Games in 1936 to merit this viewer's tube time. Boycotting TV sports seems to have become a habit with me, mainly so I can be free of professional sports' constant political correctness, which arguably peaked last April when Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred ostentatiously pulled the All-Star game out of Atlanta. In doing so, he joined the corporate pylon of the Georgia legislature's voting rules bill. This legislation is unacceptable. Uh, It is a step backwards. Professional sports success depends largely on its ability to deliver fans a respite from the worries of daily life. But of late, pro sports has decided it must take stands on some of the most fraught and wearying political issues of our time. Nike stands with the Black Lives Matter. Fortunately, some athletes are starting to push back. Nike stands with Stop Asian Hate. Here's the NBA's Ennis Cantor, who's pointing out that while Nike stands with minority groups in the United States, the Latino community, it doesn't in China. Nike likes to say, just do it. Well, what are you doing about the slave labor that makes your shoes? He invited the owner of Nike, Phil Knight, to fly with him to China in an effort to see the conditions firsthand. He also called out his political competitors. LeBron James and Michael Jordan, you guys are welcome to come too. An often asked question is, where will this moralism end? The answer might be in the very capital of political correctness, Washington, D.C., where the favorite sport after politics is professional football. By tradition. And where in recent days the Washington Redskins, established in the 1930s, changed its name. What is the new team name? Doug, what is it? We are the Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a proposition. If your team is named after nothing, it will perform like nothing. We are the Commanders. Just look at the high-performing team names in the recent thrilling NFL playoff games. The Bengals, Buccaneers, Chiefs, 49ers, Rams. Coincidence? I think not. End of prediction. The Commanders and all the no-offense-named teams that come after them will lose forever. In fact, their transition has me thinking that the PC project may finally be running out of steam. What is it like to go into a competition against a transgender athlete when you know the outcome ahead of time? Yeah, it's extremely deflating. I've experienced it five times, and each time I lost to a biological male. Since Miss Kenyon's appearance on Fox News, 16 women on the University of Pennsylvania's swimming team have sent a letter to its administrators and to the Ivy League, asserting that the criteria for competing in women's swim meets should be the biology of sex rather than the gender identity of transgender athletes. And so I just kind of want to say to the female athletes in Pennsylvania, don't let anyone silence you. Speak up. Tell the NCAA, your athletic directors, and your coaches that you want fair competition because doing this is nowhere near as scary as it seems. When coerced revisions involve the renaming of a sports team to the commanders, people grumble and endure one more affront. But for the better part of a year, we've watched parents of K-12 students discover that school boards and teachers have been making substantive PC changes to curriculums. I will be speaking today about critical race theory, also known as CRT. COVID, if nothing else, has been a great focuser of minds, and here parents have organized to stop such significant, undiscussed curriculum changes. That opposition now looks like an expanding political movement. CRT is an ideology not based on facts or data that makes race the focus through which all aspects of American life are analyzed in order to change the laws and institutions in society. When the Winter Olympics end, Xi Jinping will reimpose business as usual in China. But in the United States, political and cultural conformity looks to be slipping out of favor.